Well, the ongoing mystery of Russia's role in the 2016 U.S. election took an unexpected turn early Saturday morning when President Trump took to Twitter, writing, quote, terrible, just found out that Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory. Nothing found. This is McCarthyism, unquote. Trump went on to tweet, how low has President Obama gone to tap, spelled T-A-P-P, -P, to tap my phones during the very sacred election process? This is Nixon Watergate, bad or sick guy, unquote. President Trump offered no evidence, but within 24 hours, he called on lawmakers to probe Obama's actions. On Sunday morning, Trump's spokesperson Sarah Huckabee Sanders defended the remarks to host Martha Raddatz on ABC's This Week. The president of the United States is accusing the former president of wiretapping him. I think that this is, again, something that, if this happened, Martha, if, this if, would— If, 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 <laughs> if. I agree. Why is the president saying it did happen? Look, I think he is going off of information that he's seen that has led him to believe uh, that this is a very real potential. And if it is, this is the greatest overreach and the greatest abuse of power that I think we've ever seen in a huge attack on democracy itself. And the American people have a right to know if this took place. It appears the information Trump spokesperson Sarah Huckabee Sanders is referring to is a Breitbart article based on a claim by the far right wing radio host Mark Levin on Meet the Press. Uh, host Chuck Todd interviewed President Obama's director of national intelligence, James Clapper. I can't speak officially anymore, but uh, I will say that for the part of the national security apparatus that I oversaw as DNI, there was no such wiretap activity mounted against uh, the president uh, pr the president elect at the time or as a candidate or against his campaign uh, i can't speak for uh, other title 3 mm -hmm. authorized uh, entities in the government or uh, a state or local entity yeah, i was just going to say if the fbi for instance d had a fisa court order of some sort for a surveillance would that be information you would know or not know yes you would be told this. I would know that. If there was a FISA court order yes. on something like this. Um, something like this, absolutely. And at this point, you can't confirm or deny whether that exists? I can deny it. There is no FISA court order? Not, not to my knowledge. Of anything at Trump Tower? No. During the same interview, James Clapper said he's seen no evidence of collusion between members of the Trump campaign and the Russians. Meanwhile, The New York Times is reporting FBI Director James Comey has asked the Justice Department to publicly reject Trump's assertion that Obama ordered the tapping of Trump's phones. The Times described Comey's request as a, quote, remarkable rebuke of a sitting president, unquote. This all comes just days after Attorney General Jeff Sessions recused himself from any investigation into last year's presidential campaign following reports he met twice with Russia's ambassador to the U.S. while serving as a campaign surrogate for Donald Trump. To make sense of what's happening, we're joined by two guests who will not agree on most anything on this issue. Attorney Scott Horton, lecturer at Columbia Law School, uh, contributing editor at Harper's Magazine, and Robert Parry, veteran investigative journalist and editor of the website ConsortiumNews.com, his latest article, The Politics Behind Russiagate. Uh, Scott, let's begin with you. Around this FISA order, why does President Trump have to say he's heard reports. Can he pick up the phone and find out? Absolutely. Uh, as commander-in-chief, he would have the right to demand and receive a briefing about anything that's going on. Uh, and he would also have the power to declassify and release uh, any information that's been obtained, including FISA court orders, warrants, or, or other documents. And he's obviously chosen not to do that and instead rely on a Breitbart report of a Mark uh, Levin uh, rant. And he could declassify. Absolutely. And release. Uh, Scott, uh, what is your sense of, uh, as this continuing Russia situation has developed over the next, last several weeks, of, of what is going on here? Well, I think the, uh, there's, been, there's growing pressure for a probe of, uh, of Russian activities in the election uh, within Congress. I think it's, uh, it's gathering support from more leaders uh, of the Republicans. I think it's more difficult for the re Republican leadership to push back against it. I think what we see right now uh, is uh, an attempt by President uh, Trump to derail all that uh, and change the agenda uh, to another issue. Now, I have to note, uh, if you look at uh, General Clapper's statement uh, 
it was very carefully phrased. I mean, so he said no FISA court order of this type of the Trump Tower. Uh, and I think that there there is something in the background uh, that the media is so far not doing a good job of, of, of reporting and covering. Uh, and there is a FISA court order. But to be clear, it's not, uh, it's not an order that directed tapping of Trump Tower or Donald Trump. Rather, uh, it's an order that, that was issued on October 15th, uh, has not been reported in the U.S. media, has been reported uh, in Europe more extensively. And it's in connection with an in a counterintelligence investigation that's been going on since last summer that targets not Donald Trump, but five individuals who have or at one point did play some role in his campaign and their dealings with, uh, with people who are suspected to be Russian intelligence operatives. Tell us more about that. Uh, well, we don't know much about it, because the entire process surrounding FISA court proceedings is secret. But when you see— uh, The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance uh, Act, Act Court. Act, Act Court. And, and, you know, to obtain that order, a judge had to review an application that justified it and had to find uh, that there was probable cause to issue the order. Now, all the judges of the FISA court are Republicans. In fact, they were all selected by Chief Justice Roberts, and they're all people very much like him. Uh, so, for a FISA judge— to have authorized this is quite something. I think we saw Lindsey Graham uh, hinting at that uh, in the past. Uh, and when we see reports uh, previously uh, about, uh, about uh, intercepts of communications mm -hmm. and what they may or may not said, that's all coming out of this investigation. Well, Bob Perry, you've written that there is no there there uh, in this issue of uh, the uh, all of the hullabaloo that we've seen in the press over Russia and Trump. Could you expound on that and give us your take? Well, I'm not sure there's no there there. What I'm saying is that so far, the uh, the Obama administration, and as far as we know, uh, what's happened since then, with some of the holdovers from the Obama administration, they've not presented the real evidence to to show that there was this effort by the Russians to uh, leak this material or hack this material and provide it to WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks has flatly denied that they received this information from the Russians. They They've indicated there were apparently two American insiders who they believe um, were the, were, would, would have been the sources of this information. So, what you've got is a lot of ifs going on, not just the ifs that, uh, that uh, President, uh, President uh, uh, Trump has uh, put out through his tweets, but also now uh, there's also a lot of ifs about what happened initially. So, we have a, we have a situation where Washington has kind of gone nuts where there hasn't been um, the kind of evidence presented on anyone's part that convinces me or a lot of other people that have looked at this, including former people from the National Security Agency, people like William Binney. So you have, so you have problems here where the evidence is not supporting, at least to this, degree, this point, uh, a lot of these allegations. We've had a lot of suspicions and a lot of, uh, a lot of smoke, but so far not much in the way of fire. And you've also raised that uh, Russia has been is increasingly being made the boogeyman, uh, not only by those on the right, but many on the left who are who were uh, either supporters of President Obama or were progressives who ended up supporting Hillary Clinton. Uh, that you feel that there's an unnecessary heating up of a new Cold War. Well, there's no question we're now into, into a new Cold War, and we're also seeing kind of a new McCarthyism. Uh, what you've seen is this a very hostile approach that the United States has taken toward Russia, going back, really, to the Ukraine crisis, uh, and it has been escalating. And the Russians have have responded somewhat in kind. Uh, so you've had you had a a much more cooperative relationship between President Obama and President Putin that preceded the 2014 Ukraine crisis. They worked together on the Syrian crisis. Uh, they, uh, it was Putin who got uh, Assad to give up his chemical weapons. They worked together on Iran, getting Iran to, to constrain its nuclear program. Uh, but then, with the, with the crisis in Ukraine, which was not simply a, a case of—it of, uh, was a case of, in, that involved some American input to try to create that, that as, a, as a, uh, a turning point in how this whole relationship developed. Uh, so we've had we've had this narrative set up that the Russians are made into the into the bad guys, and that has now continued on into the campaign, now into the new presidency. Scott Horton, your thoughts on the allegations of Russian hacking of the election and Russia's involvement uh, with Donald Trump and his associates, even if we're talking about uh, 
oligarchs helping to finance Donald Trump's uh, development projects, because it was hard for him to get lines of credit, since he had gone bankrupt so many times. Well, I think just the hacking and release of information, all on its own, is actually relatively little, uh, not so much a big deal. In fact, uh, assuming the Russians do it, and I think the evidence, uh, unlike my colleague, I think the evidence is very convincing that they did, it's not a big deal. It's what intelligence services do all over the world. What would make this a far bigger matter is if there were collusion between the Trump campaign and Russians throughout the process, if the hacking were requested, if it were being guided by them. And then, if beyond that, uh, it were to turn out that the Russians, in fact, financed Donald Trump to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars, um, as indeed his son acknowledged in the press statement before the campaign uh, got going. What I mean, do you all, mean? Uh, that is, that if you look at, at Trump's situation after the bankruptcies of the in 2004, when the banks withdrew their letters of credit, most people thought he was finished. From that point forward, there was an infusion of hundreds of millions of dollars into Trump projects, Trump-branded projects all around the world that refloated the Trump empire and made it viable. All that money seems to have come out of Russia, from Russian oligarchs and Russian organized crime groups. Uh, and that's uh, something that was really not very well developed uh, during the campaign. And those facts altogether would explain what is otherwise an almost inexplicable uh, relationship between Donald Trump and Putin, where he cannot criticize this man or say a negative thing, thing about him. Well, Bob Perry, uh, you're famed for your investigative reports, and you said that, uh, unfortunately, with uh, uh, in journalism today, there's a lack of real investigative reporting. It's basically right. who can get the first leaks from which which branch of which intelligence agency in the government. What do you think is lacking in terms of the kinds of uh, investigations that journalists should be using? What about this whole issue of the long-term uh, economic relationships that may have existed between Trump and uh, Russian oligarchs? Well, again, there are a lot of ifs here, and, and I don't think there's been any hard evidence presented on these things, either. Uh, there was this reference from The Sun, who was apparently talking about some of these Russian oligarchs buying up Trump um, condos and other kind of properties. But that doesn't mean it was coming from the Russian government. This idea that the, everything in Russia is controlled at the top is not really true. Uh, it's a large country like ours is, and, and there are many different factors and, and factions that operate. So to pretend that, that we all know this is, is, is somewhat misleading. And there's a huge amount of, 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 the, of this whole question of if. Uh, we're at a very dangerous point here, where there's a real possibility of a crisis between the United States and Russia. And instead of anything that's been very serious or hard in terms of evidence, we've been, we've been dealing with suppositions. Uh, there's, and and as, as Scott says, even if the Russians did somehow get this information to WikiLeaks, the information itself was all accurate. It dealt with things that were relatively significant in terms of what we would know about um, how, the, how the Clinton campaign was operating. But it was not decisive in any way to the election. Uh, Hillary Clinton herself blamed uh, James Comey for his reopening of her investigation into her, um, into her um, email situation as the principal cause for her defeat. It wasn't the Russians. Scott Horton. Well, I think any election in which the man who was second past the post wins and is installed in president and a shift of 40,000 votes would have dramatically uh, affected the outcome, uh, any of a number of hundreds of things could have caused a change in the election. I think what we've seen here, and I agree with, uh, with Bob Perry on this, is a really dramatic failure of inquiry uh, by the press during the election, failure to develop uh, a number of really important issues relating to Trump and the Trump campaign. Uh, but there's no reason not to fully explore and develop them right now. And I think, in the end, if everything goes in the direction I think it's going to go, this would be the end of the Trump presidency. And you've also said, uh, haven't you, that you basically you would agree with Bob Perry on the general uh, outlines of the criticism of the U.S. policy toward uh, toward Russia that there's that there's been much more aggressive posture by the United States and in interfering in in uh, in affairs uh, close to the Russian borders. Yes, I agree. So I mean, I think the U.S. made grave mistakes in the way it expanded NATO into the region and the way it interacted with uh, Georgia, for instance, uh, before the war in 2008. Uh, but that's another 
another set of questions. Uh, and I think the, the confrontation we're looking at from Russia today is not the old Cold War kind of confrontation with nuclear weapons and armored divisions. It's, uh, it is a, a very aggressive policy of intervention and engagement in Western politics and Western elections, it's not just in the United States. It's going on today in France and Italy and Germany, uh, and following the same uh, shadow, the same profile in almost every single country. We're going to continue this conversation and then post online at democracynow.org. Scott Horton teaches at Columbia Law School, writes for Harper's Magazine, and Bob Perry writes for Consortium News, and we'll link to his piece there. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Nermeen Sheikh, Carla Wills, Laura Gottesdiener, Dina Guster, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey Massoud, Sharina Nadura, Andre Lewis, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, and Paul Huckabee, our engineers. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby, Hugh Grant, David Prude, R.L. Boone, Vesta Godars, Anthony Manzo. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez for another edition of Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. Also, check out our website. We have a full-time social media fellowship. Check out the details at democracynow.org. Thanks for joining us.